Hey everybody and welcome to another video from Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to talk about game level design and how we can bring that design into Unreal in order to lay out our maze in a little bit more uh, efficient manner rather than just kind of randomly placing these pieces together. So what we're going to do is start out with a Photoshop document and now you can use anything from GIMP to a piece of paper and pencil and as long as you can scan that in or just take a photo with your camera that's all that's really needed and you'll see what I mean as we go but we're just going to go ahead and lay out our basic level design and we're going to talk about some considerations and tips and whatnot in order to lay out a pretty cool maze so let's get started what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a 2000 by 2000 pixel uh, document here we could go up a little bit larger but for when you're actually creating and pulling it into Unreal we don't want this thing to be super huge so again we're just going to start off with this square image and what you might think of for a maze is you might think about having uh, let's switch over to our line tool uh, if we go down here and just select our line tool we might have a, a starting point maybe up here. What we're gonna do is actually draw lines on this screen to set up our maze. And so again, you might say we have a, excuse my bad handwriting, start here and maybe a finish here. Well, that's not exactly very good unless you're trying to utilize all of this extra space. Something that might be a little bit better is let's say uh, we get rid of the the finish here I'm actually going to create a new layer so that on top of our background we can we can write and delete that we want to start off maybe start somewhere else maybe here because what will that allow us to do is as we start off we can go left we can go right and we can continue on down here we can maybe wind up over here or we can take I'm gonna take the select tool and just maybe move it around maybe the start and that'll allow us to maybe allow the player to go back like this or like this so these are some of the considerations you want to uh, take in for your level design and this doesn't have to be related to a maze it could be for other games as well especially first-person shooters or designing a first person level uh, that is a complex, right? Like if you're in a building, you can lay out your building this way. If we use the um, rectangle tool, we could say that, uh, let's put this right about there. And now inside of our building, we might have an outside, we can set up walls within our building and then maybe have different layers in Photoshop or, or a different page in your notebook that lays out what the floor might look like. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that. Let's stick to our maze, but I think you can apply this to other areas as well. Um, so I'm gonna actually just go ahead and delete this. And let's start off our start right about here okay and i'm going to switch over back to the line tool again just to keep this a little bit nicer the first thing you might want to do is lay out a a line just like this and if you hold down the shift key you can just keep that straight and that's going to be our our level and then maybe we have a a four-way piece here but what we actually probably want to do, try 20 pixels here. Um, that's not going to be good enough. Okay, so once you get that weight situated, we also want to capture the width of our, our hallway because what's going to happen is if we go ahead and do this and then that and then we come back here, those aren't going to snap up to our uh, to our um, our pieces that we have. So make sure that you do account for the width is here and not just single lines. And let me just get rid of this. Okay, so what do we want to present our player with the first thing? Do we just want to present them with a straight hallway that has maybe a, uh, a four-way piece that kind of goes, oops, let's switch over to our line tool. 
that kind of presents them with a choice of going left and right. That might be an option. Or do we stick them straight in line with maybe the start is right in the center and now they have a choice to go forward, left, right, or backwards. That's really confusing. So make these considerations depending upon the theme of your game, what you want the, the player to first see when they start off. Maybe they're outside of the maze. Maybe it's a cave that they go into or uh, stairs that they go down first. And maybe this is the outside first. Uh, and that's, that's quite doable as well. And so if that's the case and the start is above ground, we can have something that kind of loops back on itself. Something like this. So maybe these are stairs, uh, and we can denote that if we want to. Uh, and once you get these these different layers on here, um, I could just collapse it all back down, or um, you can write in here stairs. And I'm gonna make this kind of messy, but you guys could get the idea of this. Now we could pull this out. We could draw this along. We can also put ourselves in the player's position of if I am right here, well, which way am I facing? Am I facing this way? When we come down the stairs here, uh, once I reach this corridor, is there any reason why I might go uh, in the player's perspective to the left or to the right or keep going straight? Is there something down this way that catches my eye? Is there a glow from a torch? Is there a flashing of light? Uh, is there a reason why one might go down this way instead? Maybe that it looks like there's a, um, a, a treasure or a pickup of some sort that I could easily pick up. And maybe I just continue along that route and that turns into a dead end. So think about these things of how you want to draw the player in to these different corridors. Maybe this side is the correct side to go down. And let's just, let's just draw this out a little bit. And draw it down here, out here. And now you, you probably want to make this a little bit to scale where your pieces would would snap up here. But I'm again, just kind of being a little messy here. And maybe this is just too long of a straight pathway. I want to add some interest here. Maybe there's a little room over here. And then this continues down here. And you don't have to fill up your, your space. There's no reason. There's no rules to say, you know, you have to fill up over here. You have to fill out over here. Maybe this goes down a little bit. And maybe dead ends here, or maybe there's a secret passageway here, something like that. And you can annotate these. Uh, let's create a new, a new layer for our annotation and just say uh, secret. Pardon my handwriting. And Again, just lay out your, if you, if you see a long hallway that's a little bit too boring, yeah, just create a junction or something like that. It doesn't have to go anywhere. It could actually just go around and, oops. Let's get this right here. But again, you get the idea. But what I am trying to stress here is so that when you create this level and we bring it into Unreal as kind of a blueprint to put on top of, or to put below so that we could put our level pieces on top, it'll be super easy to just lay these out and not have to think about uh, how our, our level is flowing. We can do it from a very easy top-down level. Uh, you can, again, do this on a piece of notebook paper and then scan it in and it'll look you know basically the same the other thing that i wanted to uh, make sure that we talked about is and go ahead and go back to that one layer so i'm going to use my brush tool and instead of black i am going to select bring this over here maybe like a blue color and the blue is going to denote maybe health that is in this level and I'm gonna make my brush big enough i'm going to put health Maybe if the user does go down here and follows all this, they are rewarded with, uh, let's actually drag this layer to the top to make sure it's it's uh, there. You know, I'm just gonna color in a blue dot there to show that that's going to be health. And maybe there's health right here. Another color we can use, or even just annotate it, let's just use red, to 
show that there's an enemy. Maybe there's an enemy that's right there. Oops, that's not red. Switch our colors. Right on, right here, and saying, look, there is an enemy here, and as I come around this corner, if I don't look down this hallway and just continue on to, to find this health piece, this monster or whatever is going to come out and, and grab me. So again, think about how you might lay out your, your levels that way to trick the user at every turn. What interesting things can you put if you realize that there's a long stretch of black that denotes that there's just nothing there? So maybe I make it a little bit interesting again by creating another monster there, or maybe there's one here, and maybe there's one here and here. But now this, from the top-down view, looks very crowded. So let's just maybe remove one of those monsters. So as I round this, this uh, turn, this monster sees me and starts to attack. And as I'm fighting him, this one comes out. Or if I, if I try to run away, away from that monster and past him as he's coming, and maybe we meet right in the center, this monster sees me and starts chasing me as well. So again, these are just con some considerations. Uh, maybe after this epic battle of monsters, we reward the user with a health kit down here somewhere as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and quickly just lay out some easy pieces here. And we're just going to call this the, the finish on here. I'm going to create a new layer for this and just say finish. So you'll, you'll want to be able to annotate your, your map. So again, as you're laying this out, you've already thought about this stuff and you're not thinking about it as you're trying to, to put pieces into Unreal. So again, I think you get the idea. So let's go ahead and save this file out. We're going to export it out as a PNG file. I'm just going to go ahead and save it and we're going to call it level zero one plan. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and save that and then we're gonna put it into a folder and bring it into Unreal. All right, so I put it into a folder called level plan inside of my assets folder for my projects. And this is not in Unreal yet, but we have the PNG file here. I'll show you how to bring this in. So under our custom folder, we don't have any uh, uh, folders in here yet, but if we go ahead and right click and create new folder what we're going to do is call this um, this is going to be just called uh, level plan plans with an s so under custom level plans and then i called it level zero one plan do the import so i'm just gonna do it the old-fashioned way by clicking on the import button and then navigating to where it is and hitting open and that'll bring it in all right, so let's actually zoom way out and let's uh, get a, uh, let's be able to drag this in. And so in order to drag this in, we have to drag it on to something. We could drag it onto a surface, but that surface isn't going to be big enough. So what we wanna do is go over here to uh, this area here because we're gonna add in a basic shape and that's going to be a plane. We're going to drag in that plane and we're going to scale it up by quite a bit so let's just drag this up well let's just stop there and just show you what happens you see this got applied to that texture but it doesn't have uv mapping yet just drag that in and it'll go ahead and create that material for us automatically and then also it'll lay out this uh this plane so this plane is way up in space so let's go ahead and just drop it down uh, way farther than that. Okay, so that now this is on our grid and we can see it. And now we're just going to simply scale this up a lot. And I'm just going to go over here and affect this. So I'm going to turn this lock on so that every one of these is locked into place. The Z uh, really shouldn't matter since it's a plane. And I'm just gonna scale this up to 100. And everything should be there. I guess the Z doesn't really matter, but let's just put that back down to one. All right, so maybe this wasn't 
big enough at 100, but you can kind of get the idea of how this might go, where we need to create a corridor down here, and then here, and then here, and you can see the little dots in Photoshop and, and how this might work. So it looks like we even need to scale this up by three times. So I'll just go to 300, and it looked like it did unlock that when we changed that. Okay, so now the scale is looking a little bit better. Uh, I'm just gonna snap this closer to where we already are at here. We're not gonna be perfect. I, I can mess with the settings here to get this down perfect. Normally you do that in Photoshop and just to make sure that if it's gonna be, let's say a thousand pixels uh, by a thousand pixels or 2000 pixels, that that line weight is going to match up closer. But this will give us uh, a rough idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed up the level design so that we can lay out our, our pieces along this black line. Let's go ahead and speed this up and I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so you get the main idea. We could uh, spend a little bit more time finishing this up, but you may have noticed that we run into kind of an issue here where maybe something like this piece doesn't have any way to end this um, these corridors. And so what you might find is as you go ahead and build your level, that it'd be really nice to have certain types of pieces in uh, in here so that we can transform this into an end piece here and here so that we can force our player down this hallway. Let's go ahead and play this really quickly and discover what this might look like. And so I've exited that way and maybe I should uh, change the way that my player character where he's set up. Yeah, wrong hallway. So select this guy and move him into the right hallway. All right, so here he is. He's going along here. Those would normally be capped off. Go down a hallway here. Again, some call, uh, caps there. There'd be a cap at the end of this hallway, but it's looking pretty good. This hallway's a little bit boring. It's just going straight, and I don't really have any decisions to make at this point, but oh, here we go. Now I do have a decision. Do I go down that way? It looks pretty interesting. Go down that way. Oh, there's a health piece down there. Let's go ahead and grab that. Or I guess it's it was capped off. <laughs> and you know, so you get the idea of, of how this might look in, in playing your game. So now you can see basically how far we traveled, whether that distance was a good time for the player to get to, whether they got through it too quickly. Of course, with fighting monsters or whatever you have in your game. Uh, take that into consideration. But again, this is an introduction to level design and how you can easily lay this out for Unreal and bring it in. All right, so in the next video, what we're gonna do is I'm going to quickly just create these end caps, but we're gonna get into a little bit of interactivity in our level. So when a player gets to something uh, we want to be able to open doors and whatnot. So join us for the next video. If you like this video, hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe to see more, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.